tell me, did, did you have some early influences, some men or women, maybe older siblings, that, uh, that taught you things that really changed your life that even today you look back, look back on and say, boy, that's, that's something that made a difference for me? Well, all those things, uh, you know, our parents, of course, were the, you know, the, our mainstays and, and uh, 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 the leadership that they gave. My, my, my dad was a minister as well, and, uh, you know, I never will forget his teachings, and uh, my mother as well. But then I had older brothers, and I still look for them, to them for leadership. I mean, uh, so yeah, they they uh, they were my family, of course, and then uh, other people. You know, all you have to do is ask, and uh, you know, I, I I learned to do that pretty frequently. And when I was starting out, you know, had a lot of people, and particularly in our our industry. I don't think it's totally different from everybody else's, but. This industry, I talked about the generosity, and it's not just the generosity of money and you know uh, philanthropy, which is big. We see that that all around from uh, oil companies, but also uh, the uh, information, you know, the uh, uh, passing down knowledge to uh, young people starting in the, the the business. I just don't think there's another industry quite like it. Well, speaking of the inner industry, you graduated high school in 1964 from Enid High School. Uh, you saw lots of things happening in the oil industry right around you then, so you decided to move into the industry. And you talked briefly about your first foray uh, at work. You were not drilling wells when you first entered the oil industry. What was your first job? Well, clean out tanks, stock tanks. Uh, you know, I started at the bottom. <laughs> The very bottom. <laughs> uh, well, two years later, in 1966, I understand that you went and got a loan to buy a Ford truck, and you began the Harold Ham Tank Truck Tank Truck Company. That was real innovative, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also understand that you had you had somebody co-sign for you, so you could get the loan. Did you pay that individual back, or did you give him stock in your company a little bit later? No, I paid him back, and we wasn't public, so <laughs> <laughs> he, he was wanting to see that, that payment back, yeah. So, so uh, he probably should have taken the stock if he had a chance. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, so, so what did you do there? You took, you took mud and water out to the, to the drilling rig sites? Yeah, we were, we were doing everything. I was still cleaning tanks, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, then doing the completion work as well, you know, with the, with the trucks. And quickly, pretty quickly, I, I run one truck for about two years, and then we started expanding it. And, uh, but, you know, it, I went through the process of having to lift my lid. I couldn't hire people for a while. I didn't have enough leadership skills. Mm -hmm. You know, they, people know. If they, they're, they want to follow a leader. And if you're not one, they're not going to hire on. You know, they're not going to follow you. You have to become that leader. So, I, there for a while, I had to do it myself. Wow. So, a few years later then, you formed another company. You named it the Shelley Dean Company. Where did you come up with that name? Uh, well, my two daughters, uh, you know, I named it after our two daughters that we had. Uh, Shelley Dean Oil Company. I had The oldest one was Dina and then uh, Shelley, but... Dean Shelley didn't go very good. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Did Dean, has Dean forgiven you for not putting her name first? I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and so that was an exploratory company. I mean, you were going out looking for, for oil wells, for places, for places to drill. You, uh, you worked hard. You talked to a lot of people to get advice. And, uh, and was it your first well? Was it the Eldon Cook number two? It was. The first well we drilled was cook number two, and, and uh, we'd bought some leases, uh, some old wells from Getty Oil Company. And, uh, and anyway, we stepped over and drilled that first well, and, and uh, we, it was on an idea uh, that we had up there, uh, the porosity trend uh, across the Oswego and uh, Alfalfa County and run out into Major County. And, and anyway, then it stepped out and drilled a second well, and, and it was a... Uh, a real big hit. It made about 75 barrels an hour, and 
we were well on the way. But, you know, the, th the thing about it was that, you know, back then, uh, leases were all tied up and I didn't own enough. <laughs> mm. But anyway, it got to start pretty well. Okay, I'm about to ask a question that makes me a little bit nervous as a, uh, as a university president. Uh, you had success in the oil industry, and then you decided to go to college after that. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't advise that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you go yes, off and uh, make a fortune and go to school, I don't sound thank you. right. Oh. Amen, thank you very much. <laughs> And I was hopeful you weren't going to say that it messed you up when you went to college uh, either. <laughs> no, it didn't. It, uh, it was very helpful. I was able to go to college there at Phillips University there in Enid and got the uh, uh, geologic uh, skill set I needed to go forward, and it's been very, very helpful. Mm, good, good. Okay, college yeah. education is a good thing. It's a good <laughs> thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, in the mid-'90s, uh, you, you went north. Uh, you spent some time up in the Dakotas, and, uh, and you hit a well in, in 1995 that was one of the largest producers, as I understand it, it's one of the largest onshore finds in about 20 years in the United States. Well, we found a field, uh, and by doing it different, uh, horizontally, this, this field was drilled strictly with horizontal wells, or what any vertical wells in it, and, uh, you know, that's commercial. And, uh, and anyway, uh, the whole field uh, developed uh, about a 250 million barrel field, and it was a larger field, uh, large field, been found about 20 years. Yeah. Mm. And then, um, and then you kept looking up there, and then really you've uncovered the Bakken, which has changed the face uh, of of domestic oil and gas uh, production in the U.S., hasn't it? Yeah, we, we kept messing with the Bakken. Uh, we drilled the first well uh, to the Bakken, oh, a Conrad Granville well uh, back in the 80s. And uh, his dry hole is one of those 17, I think. <laughs> and and, and uh, anyway, we didn't give up. We kept it in mind and we mapped out another portion of the field. And in the early, uh, in, in about 96, uh, one of our geologists there in, in uh, uh, with Continental, and uh, and anyway, even that wasn't commercial uh, at that point. Uh, but later on, uh, when we started multi multi stage completions and and uh, you know fracking the laterals, uh, then it uh, came into com commerciality. But this was after 2000, so it took took a long period of time. And then it wasn't just like knocking the door down. I mean, there was like 18, 17, 18 uncommercial wells drill before, uh, you know, the code was broken. But by the way, over the last few years, Oklahoma has, one of the, has had one of the strongest economies among all 50 states. Maybe second only to up in the Dakotas, where uh, Continental Resources has done such great work in the Bakken, where the unemployment rate is, I think, in the three percentage range or, or so. I want to ask you, Harold, about, um, about what you look for in employees. And before I say that, uh, there's, there might be 150 resumes floating around college students right now um, that, that might be handed to you before you know it. Um, what are you good. looking for in a good employee? Well, you know, the, for first of all, somebody that's passionate about what they do, I, I'm serious about that. Uh, also, uh, folks that that uh, have a, a vision, have uh, kind of know where they're, they're going, and uh, they have to know where they're going before they can help you. Uh, so want to make sure they got both feet on the ground themselves. And then somebody that uh, understands the disciplines, uh, you know, whether it be engineer, uh, geology, geo geophysics, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, we, we look for the sharp, very sharp people. Uh, you know, those are the, the people that lead our company today. A lot of folks uh, within just a few years uh, are leading very key uh, exploration groups uh, and geologic uh, uh, teams. And uh, so that, that's, that's what we look for. You have been quite a philanthropist. Uh, the Harold Ham Diabetes Center is doing great research, uh, really um, moving the knowledge base forward uh, in that area. You've had great success in supporting programs up in North Dakota. 
Uh, you have signed the Giving Pledge, I understand, which um, is, is something that Mr. Warren Buffett and, and Bill Gates and others have really championed, which uh, I believe, if I understand it correctly, is that you want to give away half of your wealth um, uh, at, at, by the time of your death. And I really applaud you for all of those things that you're doing. Do you see giving back in those ways a component of service leadership not unlike paying it forward or paying it back to individuals? Well, you know, I talked about the generosity of people and, <clears throat> and certainly giving play is a good example of that. I mean, there's 80-some uh, people, uh, the most famous, Bill Gates, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, and others, but, you know, the number wasn't very big when we signed on. And the pledge is that you give away half of your wealth during your lifetime at least. And most people wind up giving all of it away. I mean, uh, Warren Buffett has made play to do that with the Gates Foundation already. And, right. and certainly Bill and Melinda has given a, you know, a bulk of theirs away. But, uh, you know, what, what it's all about is helping other people and, you know, in service. So it, uh, that's, that's what everybody should think about doing. And and you, you don't have to be a member of the uh, Given Pledge group to do that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things in your community and, and just service to others uh, that everybody does, you know, that uh, it matters so much. Uh, you wouldn't have this university mm -hmm. uh, or most of the university here in Oklahoma without it. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you for that. Um, a related question, I want to ask you, uh, I don't want to pry, but I want to ask you about a, about a spiritual matter. Um, what motivates you from a spiritual perspective, Mr. Ham? Well, you know, I talk about the guiding principles, and everybody has to have those, and, and certainly uh, uh, I, I do. Uh, so, you know, I go back, uh, you know, my character resonates from those. Uh, and, of course, I've been... Uh, uh, I believe in Christ and a uh, 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 power a lot larger than what we are and have for a long time. And, and uh, so however you uh, demonstrate that is up to, to you and, and, you know, whatever your belief is. But uh, most people do need to uh, believe in something bigger uh, to, you know, uh, life's going to throw you some curveballs. <laughs> And so you, you're going to have to have something to bolster your uh, character. Yeah, thank you. Do we have microphones? Uh, any questions from the audience? Students, have you a question for, for Mr. Ham? Yeah. Down front, Tyler Will. Mr. Ham, my name is Tyler Perrett. I'm a junior political science major. Uh, you talked about vision. And how did your vision change and adapt to your changing circumstances as you were growing your business? And what advice do you have for students as we adapt our vision to our changing circumstances? Okay, I, I think you said the word uh, adapt. Uh, that, that's a key word. Uh, you know, somebody asked me, why did, why did I go into business? And I, I want a new pickup, and I want a new car. <laughs> And you want to pay off my house, and, and you know that was that was that vision at that time. So you need one. Uh, make sure it's adaptable, and uh, as you go forward, because your life's going to change, and as as you do go forward, you're going to have more responsibilities and all that uh, probably, uh, and you and you need to change that vision, maybe for your family, your growing family, and and all that business. And so make sure that you can adapt it to the circumstances as you go. But vision is important. You got to know where you're going. My name is Alex Gower. I'm a sharp, hardworking mechanical engineer, senior. Got him up, Rick. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you paying it backwards to our generation. And I just had about three questions that I wanted to ask you. Uh, <laughs> My first question, <clears throat> my first question was, 
Uh, what time do you wake up in the morning? I, I mean, I look at things, you know, many people that are successful wake up early. They, you know, they wake up early to accomplish things. And leading to that, I was also wondering, how do you invest in yourself? What are some things, like I feel in the Bible, uh, God calls us to invest in ourselves and to have personal studies so that we can find out how we can follow him better. So I was wondering how, how you invest in yourself. And obviously, my third thing was I would like to shake your hand after this and get a business card so we can talk about post-graduation. All right. He, he also made, he, he may want to go to work in sales, too. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's important to invest in yourself. I, I, I do that. I, I wake up about 5.30 in the morning and work out and, and try to stay in shape. And, and uh, you know, sometimes just going out and hunt with my dog and uh, it's pretty good invest, uh, investment in myself. I, I, was, uh, uh, and I like to fish and, and a few things like that. But, you know, seminars and uh, all those things, I, 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 I want to continually learn, and I try to do that. I'll, you know, I never give up on learning, and so that's a continual investment as well. I saw a sign the other day uh, over at uh, Big Cedar, and it, it said, a lot of people fish all their life without finding out that they're really not fishing for fish. You know, just been out there, you know, enjoying nature is in, in a pretty good investment in yourself as well. Thank you. Are you going to shake his hand afterwards? I or? am. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Adam, and I'm an MBA student and uh, work for Devon Energy. Uh, what was the main factor on moving Continental to Oklahoma City, and what do you see now that you're here, plus sides of being here? Uh, rather than being still in um, it. Eat it. Yeah. Well, uh, the biggest factor in me uh, being able to locate uh, downtown there in Oklahoma City is Larry Nichols. Uh, you know, uh, he was, uh, he really went out of his way to make that possible and, uh, and make a very smooth transition. Uh, so, He's, he's a great guy and appreciate uh, his effort in helping us to d make that move. To build a company that we need to build, uh, we had to go to a larger talent pool. And so that uh, we, we, we thought about Denver, uh, Houston, D Dallas, uh, where, where we could go uh, you know, to get in a bigger uh, talent pool. Uh, but we want, I'm an Oklahoman, you know, I want to be here in Oklahoma. I want our people to be here in Oklahoma. And uh, I love Oklahoma. So when that opportunity came up, we talked to Larry and, and, and they were moving over the new tower. It just made it all possible, made it all work for us. So that was the impetus that got us here. And since, uh, since coming, uh, we've doubled the size of, of the workforce from uh, about 400 to about 850 now, or 860 in one year. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good leap in the right direction. So Oklahoma City is a wonderful place. We're just thrilled to be here, and uh, it's, it's working out great. Harold, we're glad you're in Oklahoma City. <laughs> it's good to be here. It is. It's, it's good to have you there. Mm. Uh, and my guess is, students, it's really good for us that Continental Resources is located about 12 miles south rather than, rather than in Enid. If you had one last opportunity to share one last bit of wisdom with these students, what would that, what would that piece of wisdom be? Well, you're all, you're all here in a, a great university setting. Uh, get the very best education you, you can get. You'd think, well, I'll go back and do that later or something. It's, it's a little tougher when you get out there and work in, uh, get other, other commitments, family and, and whatever. Uh, so anyway, be true to yourself. If you're in a, uh, the wrong area, change. Get in something you like. Uh, make sure you like it. You'll do better at it. Uh, you know, find out what your passion is. 
and know that you can do it. You know, it's possible here in America. So don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. And it's very good to be with you. Very, very, uh, I've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harold Hamm.